Minimally Invasive Plate Osteosynthesis. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series Version 5. Slides are by Dr. Maloney. I'm Sakib Ramon narrating. And let's define uh, what MEPO is. So this is a mechanism of achieving plate fixation of fracture through limited soft tissue windows with the goal of preserving fracture site biology to improve healing or MEPO, Minimally Invasive Plate Osteosynthesis. So this is somewhat of an evolution of the um, original AO techniques. We'll go through that. We want to go through the objectives, which is to understand the principles of MEPO, understand the limitations of MEPO, review specific fracture patterns where MEPO is safe and effective, and learn some technical strategies to achieve success with MEPO. So the AO principles, uh, as defined initially, were really you know, restoration, of, restoration of anatomy, uh, stable fracture fixation, preservation of blood supply, and early mobilization. Okay, so uh, those four things um, are kind of restated here on this slide um, as early and safe mobilization, rehabilitation, fracture reduction and fixation to restore anatomic relationships, fracture fixation, providing absolute or relative stability, the personality of the fracture patient injury requires, and preservation of the blood supply to soft tissues and bone by gentle reduction techniques and careful handling. So this is somewhat of a modernized and uh, a little bit more detailed um, statement of the four principles of restoration of anatomy, stable fracture fixation, preservation of blood supply, and early mobilization. So what's the history of this? Well, early fracture surgery often involved anatomic reduction. So in the, with the original um, um, sort of AO techniques and those who um, practiced AO techniques often um, were focused on anatomic reduction of everything. Uh, and at times this was accomplished with extensive exposure resulting in soft tissue stripping and really potentially violating uh, that principle of preservation of the blood supply. Um, so uh, we've evolved um, to develop more biologically friendly uh, surgery and focus on preservation of periosteal blood flow. And minimally invasive plating has evolved from that concept of biologically friendly surgery. So uh, that evolution has kind of gone from open plating and sort of exposure of everything to open plating with meticulous soft tissue handling and just making sure if you're going to open everything, that's fine. You can make a big skin incision. You can see everything, but maybe you don't have to strip everything. Two um, techniques where sometimes you can do minimally invasive plating. Uh, that's not even really an open plating at all. So uh, to some extent, MEPO preserves vascularity. So uh, here's an example from a cadaveric vascularity study demonstrating marked improvement in periosteal blood flow with minimally invasive plate osteosynthesis of the distal femur compared to conventional plating. And you can see here in the um, uh, upper image how you have uh, a minimally invasive uh, plate or MEPO technique, and on the bottom, uh, sort of a more open technique from that particular study. And as you can see, this dates back to 1999, and Christian Credit and his uh, group um, were big proponents of this at the time. So MEPO is a method of applying an implant in a soft tissue friendly manner through limited incisions. And it's a technique that can be used, doesn't mean you use it all the time, but it's part of a complete surgical plan. And um, what it is not, is not always the answer, right? It's not something you always do. Uh, it's not necessarily a reduction strategy in, in every case. Uh, and um, it's not always safe. So, as always, you still need to get fracture reduction. So this is a plating method. Um, it needs to be combined with a reduction technique as well. Uh, now, you can combine MEPO with open or minimally invasive or indirect reduction techniques, but just don't forget about the reduction. Now, sometimes when you're open and you're looking at everything, the reduction comes a little bit naturally. And when you're doing MEPO, you have to sort of be a little bit more cognizant of your reduction because you're not seeing the bone and you have to use imaging and um, 
you have to be a little bit more careful. So uh, indirect reduction techniques can be done with traction. So here you see an example of intraoperative application of skeletal traction. Uh, there's a bump under the knee to correct sagittal plane deformity. Uh, there's, in this example, case of uh, traction with the use of the, of the large distractor to regain length. So you can, for instance, use these reduction techniques with bumps and traction and um, using you know fixators and distractors to help with your reduction and then do the minimally invasive plating. And you can see that approach in the distal femur, perhaps, where they're doing that. So you can also do direct reduction techniques. So simple fracture patterns warrant anatomic reduction and compression. So if you think about strain theory and sort of the, the potential advantage of you know minimizing motion and minimizing a fracture gap when you have a simple fracture pattern, you can see here that uh, they've used a percutaneously placed, um, well, we can't tell for sure, but this is a collinear clamp on the right that can be used in a percutaneous fashion. It's somewhat designed for that. And uh, in this case, you can do somewhat of a, redu a direct reduction and uh, internal fixation. You can do combined techniques. So you can do use direct reduction uh, techniques for the articular surface where you demand anatomic reduction. Um, and then minimally invasive techniques to bridge a metaphyseal or metadiaphyseal component, right? So here's where, you know, you're recognizing your AO principles. You do need anatomic reduction of the articular surfaces, and that often requires an open reduction technique. But you really just need to length, establish length alignment rotation um, and um, uh, in, in like the metadiaphyseal region, and you may not necessarily need to do anatomic reduction of all the fragments. So that can be done with indirect reduction techniques. So um, in, the, in this example, you can see there's a lateral uh, parapetal arthrotomy to get direct reduction of the articular surface to visualize. Uh, and then there's, um, you can see a clamp being used. And then there's our shans pins uh, being used here to re, um, realign and span across the, the comminution of the met, of the uh, metaphyseal and metadiaphyseal component. So in this particular case, you can see there are lag screws placed distally to compress the articular surface. There are uh, There is a uh, bridging technique, and with bridge plating, you're typically using a long plate, but you can see this is done with a minimally invasive plate osteosynthesis. There's an aiming arm, so there's an incision essentially down in this area. Um, here, where you insert the plate, uh, but then proximally, you can see that there are these aiming arms used for percutaneous insertion of screws in the plate proximally. And this is a bridge plating technique for this component of the fracture. This is a great technique. So you can also use a cortical screw as a reduction tool. Now, if your plate is properly positioned and properly contoured, to where you want to get the reduction, then you can do a minimally invasive plate technique. And in the process of doing the plate technique, you can get uh, indirect reduction by a technique such as shown here. Uh, here, the plate is it's assumed to be appropriately contoured. Uh, that is, if the uh, fragments are sucked down to the bone, then the bone should be properly realigned. And therefore, instead of using a locking screw, use a cortical screw. And you can then essentially suck that shaft fragment over to the plate. Uh, and in this case, get your reduction as shown here. So uh, neutralization plates can also be placed minimally invasively. Uh, so here's, a, you know, you can see there's an open approach done. Uh, to this fracture to get uh, direct reduction, lag screw placement. Um, uh, and then you can see here um, that there's your um, anatomic um, uh, reduction fixation uh, with lag screw. And then a neutralization plate, essentially this long locked plate, is then placed through MEPO method because um, you really don't, you know, you don't necessarily need to uh, open everything in order to facilitate plate insertion. 
So if you want to head over to otaonline.org, uh, uh, you're able to check out a whole lot of good videos. There is an example of the uh, uh, list plate here. That's a proprietary device that uh, has uh, self drilling locking screws and is designed for minimally invasive uh, plating methods. So you can go and check out that video to see uh, distal femur being fixed with that method. So this is, a, this is a case, here's a link here, you can't click on that through the video, but uh, if you head over to otaonline.org, you can check out this technique. So um, we're gonna pause here and uh, we'll talk specifically about um, the uh, distal femur, proximal tibia, and some anatomic concerns and uh, tips and techniques in the next video.